Hello, in this video, let's think about how to design digital gates in CMOS. So basically, now that we've designed an inverter, let's see how to design a generic gate in a CMOS technology. So for now, we'll ignore all design constraints and we'll just look at only a logical technique. Later on, we'll look for the speed and area uh, component of design for gates. Now let's revisit the CMOS inverter for a bit. So the CMOS inverter consists of a PMOS and NMOS, an output Y connected to the drains of the two transistors and an input A connected to the gates of the transistors. So what we also thought about is this inverter can be thought of as a pull-up transistor and a pull-down transistor with a pull-up transistor connected to VDD and the pull-down transistor connected to zero. When the output is a 1 that is if I want my output y to be a 1 I want to ensure that the pull up is shorted and the pull down is open and that way I short the pull up to VDD and since I want to transmit a VDD across the pull up I use a PMOS for a pull up in this case. Similarly when the output is a 0 right I want this pull down to be on and I want the pull up to be off. That is the pull down to be a closed switch network, the pull up to be an open switch network and I want to transmit this zero to Y. And since I want to transmit a zero, I use an NMOS in this case. So again, this is exactly the same thing as a CMOS, only thing breaking them down into a pull up transistor and a pull down transistor. So a couple of things about the pull up and pull down is that both of them are mutually exclusive. That is, when the pull up is shorted, the pull down is open. And when the pull down is shorted, the pull up is open. So we never have a case where both the networks are shorted at the same time. And so the PMOS shorts when the input is zero. And so the output is a one when the input is a zero, right, for the PMOS shorted. And similarly, NMOS shorts when the input is a one, and that pulls the output to the zero. And so what this means essentially is that CMOS is a complementing technology. Right? That is, suppose you want the output to be one, output to be one will happen only when the inputs are zero and we short the pull up network to one. Right? And so you see that therefore there's an inherent complementary uh, process that's happening in the CMOS. So CMOS is a complementing technology because the output is shorted to one only for inputs when they are close to zero. So I can extend this logic of the inverter to a generic gate. And how do I do that is that I think of the gate as again a pull up network of PMOS transistors and a pull down network of NMOS transistors. Both of them have inputs supplied to them. And based on the way the network is connected, if the inputs short this pull up network, the output goes to one. And if the input short this network, then the output goes to zero. Also, we design the two networks in such a way that at no time do these two short together. That is, they are always going to be mutually exclusive of each other. So if you think about switch networks, let's look at a couple of common switch configurations. Right? So if I think about a switch network, this path is going to be shorted only when both switches one and switches two are shorted. This path is going to be open if either one of them is open. right? So this is going to be shorted only when both one and the two are shorted. If you think about two switches connected in parallel, then the path is shorted when either one or two is shorted. You don't need both to be shorted, right? And so here the path is shorted when one or two are shorted. The path is going to be shorted even with one and two both being shorted. But even if one of them is shorted, the path gets shorted. So this becomes useful now when we want to create NMOS and PMOS networks. So since CMOS is a complementing technology, we normally design NAND and NORs instead of AND and ORs simply because of the fact that complementing is easier. 
So let's look at an AND gate. A NAND gate has two inputs. Let's look at a two input NAND, A and B. The output is a Y and Y is defined as AB complement. And if you look at the truth table of Y, Y is mostly one and Y only is goes to zero when both A and B are one. Right? So the output is pulled down to zero when both A and B are one. So the pull down network should look like a series network of switches right and so therefore if you think about the pull down network so if this is my output node my pull down network consists of two nmos transistors now these two nmos transistors are going to be create a short to ground only when both a and b are one and hence so this is your pull down network of the NAND. now on the other hand the output y goes to one when either one of them is a zero, right? So which means that when A can be a zero, the output has to be a one. When B is a zero, also the output has to be a one. So if I look at the PMOS network, the PMOS network is a parallel connection of A and B, which ensures that this network shorts when either A or B is zero. So this is the configuration of the two input NAND gate. The two input NAND gate has two NMOS transistors in series and the PMOS network consists of two PMOS transistors in parallel. Now let's look at the NOR gate. The NOR gate is given by the Boolean expression A plus B complement. And if you look at the truth table, the truth table shows that Y is one only when both A and B are zero, right? So the pull up network has to be in such a way that only when both of them are zero, the pull up network goes to one. If you look at the pull down network, the pull down network has to be shorted when either A or B are one, right? And hence the pull down network consists of the NMOS is connected in parallel. So this parallel connection of A and B will ensure that this network shorts to ground when either A or B is one. And because the network for the pull up has to short to one only when both are in zero, you get a series connection of PMOS in the pull up network. So this pull up network shorts only when A and B are both zero. And so this is the NOR gate where the PMOS are connected in series and the NMOS are connected in parallel. So generally, when we con construct CMOS gates, we normally see that when the PMOS are connected in series, the corresponding NMOS transistors tend to be connected in parallel and vice versa. Again, this is a very generic view. It works in almost all cases, but then later on we'll see certain special cases where we can get away with smaller gate areas by removing some transistors. But generically, when you're designing a CMOS gate, PMOS and NMOS networks tend to be dual of each other. That is when something is in series in the PMOS, they tend to be parallel in the NMOS. Right? So let's look at a generic gate. Suppose I want to design a four input, one output gate here. And this is the truth table of the four input gate. Now, first thing in CMOS you need to remember is that CMOS is a complementing technology. So to, it always helps to express Y as a Boolean expression, the whole complement. Because once you express it this way, then it reduces to ensuring when does this expression go to zero and when does this expression go to one. And that will lend itself to the pull down and the pull up networks. Right. So. Now let's look at this. So if you take the complement of Y and try to express the Boolean expression, again, you would have done these KMAP reductions earlier in other courses. What you get is that this truth table represents the Boolean function, AB plus CD, the whole complement, right? So now what you see here is that if you think about the pull down network, so generally because the fact that the NMOS switches short when the logic values are a one, I normally tend to begin with the NMOS network just because the true value is a one. If you like PMOS, you can start there. So here, if you look at the NMOS, 
the MOS network I need to construct is this AB plus CD. That is, the NMOS network should be such that when both C and D are one, right, my network should pull the output to zero. Similarly, when both A and B are one also, the network should pull the output to zero. And when either of them are one, they should it should pull the network to zero, right? The NMOS network consists of C and D in series, A and B also in series. Now both these A B series combination and C D series combination are connected in parallel. So this network will pull Y to ground when A and B are both one or when C and D are both one. Either of these conditions are true, the network gets pulled to ground. And because C and D are connected in series here, they tend to be connected in parallel in the PMOS. So once I know the pull down network of the uh, gate, then whatever is connected in series becomes parallel. And these two arms are connected in parallel, those become in series. So what, what you see here is A and B which were in series in the NMOS become parallel in the PMOS. Similarly, C and D in series become C and D in parallel in the PMOS and this arm and this arm which were parallel in the NMOS become a series connection in the PMOS. To conclude, a simple way to design any logic gate always begin with expressing the output as a complement of an expression. Again, CMOS this helps because CMOS is a complementing technology. And then you convert the expression to a switch diagram. You either convert it to an NMOS switch diagram or a PMOS switch diagram, depending on what you're comfortable with. And once you have created the NMOS network, the PMOS network is essentially created by making the dual of the network, right? So you either create the PMOS first or the NMOS first.